This is an introduction to the reusability aspects of the Dialy learning design matrix. If you're new to the learning design uh, concept or if you're new to Dialy, you might like to have a look at www.dialy.net. Um, here we're going to specifically talk about the way in which these are being made available through a range of uh, simple media such as PowerPoint in order to aid their reusability. We believe that in implementing the dial -E, uh, designs specifically, we need to put them into a sequence. So we are concerned, if you like, about the uh, activity management of these designs. And to put it very simply, this is a, a cycle which involves defining the context, defining the outcomes, defining specific roles for learners, then in some detail the nature of the activity, then the resource or, art or artifact, and then finally uh, some element of feedback loop. And we're going to go through each of these uh, in detail. The first requirement is to establish very clearly what the context of this particular learning activity is. Is one designing an activity that uses an artifact for an online context? Is it to stimulate debate in a seminar? Is it a large lecture theatre context? To have some serious thought about the nature of the physical space and the nature of the learner's context is an important part of that process and will indeed influence what does work and doesn't work when one actually comes to defining the nature of the activity. So the first thing we do is to look seriously at the context in which an artifact is going to be used. to define for students very clearly what they can expect from their engagement. Learners require, for the purpose of both motivation and the uh, structure that we want them to engage in, to have a very clear sense of what the outcome will be. And so although we might be in the habit of creating outcomes at a modular level, uh, I think it's important that we look at whether we can specify for each individual engagement what it is we want the learners to be able to do at the end of that uh, engagement. And in these examples, the uh, text that you see on the screen, which is in purple, uh, is indicated as simply an example. Uh, and in further work, we will provide those as illustrated examples. But at this stage, what we're suggesting is that one creates a learning outcome per activity. We suggest that it's also useful to indicate very clearly to the student what their role is in an activity. To give them a role that they can inhabit uh, actually allows them to engage with the activity in a much more conscious way. Simply to give an activity and say, this is what you have to do, this is the outcome, is not the same as saying to a learner, this is the activity we want you to do, we want you to do it like this, playing this role. And the example here is to actually specify that we want them to be an attentive listener and observer. We might well take it for granted that learners would do this anyway, but to simply uh, provide that additional instruction uh, does result in a greater degree of active and well-constructed engagement. of our effort does go into defining the activity and we've said that we think it's important to specify outcomes, we said we think it's important uh, to specify the context and the learner role. When we actually define the nature of the activity, clarity uh, is everything. So in the example here, very briefly we've suggested that they should read the notes but do so carefully. We specified they should work together. We specified that they should be attentive to each other. And we've also given some indication and structure in that there's an exploration here of differences uh, and that we should explore those differences. Now this, this is a, a relatively simple set of instructions because this was being facilitated in a seminar context and you remember we talked about the importance of context. Clearly if you were providing online instructions you would have to give significantly more detail.
you will see a number of examples of the Dali framework where a great deal of attention is paid to the nature of the artifact and the way in which an artifact is used. And this relates directly to our learning designs. Um, and I'd encourage you to go and look at those. The important thing uh, about the artifacts is that students uh, are likely to want to know uh, what the validity of that artifact is ultimately. You may not want to provide that up front because you're looking for a particular type of stimulus or abstraction from the student. But it may be appropriate to, to provide a lot of detail about the artifact that you're using. A lot of the work that we're talking about here has been based on uh, copyright free or uh, in archives where the copyright has actually been released. You clearly need to ensure that the artifacts that you're using have been cleared for the correct use and to clarify that fact to the students. Having a clarified context and role, having uh, set some outcomes for an activity and defined the activity and shared the artifact, the student requires some feedback. Um, and the more immediate the feedback, uh, we know um, that from Chikring and Gamson and others that the feedback and the degree of feedback that individuals get is both highly motivating and uh, is a major contributory factor to their ability to continue to build and to learn to, to learn. And so I think it's important that we recognize every opportunity to to indicate to the student where they themselves have created feedback, whether that's in the materials that they've produced, in the notes they've produced as part of the activity, whether it's the uh, ability to then go and engage in an online reflection that helps to build on that activity, or whether in fact the activity itself is contributing to a portfolio-based assessment. We are looking to indicate clearly to the student why they've done something, and so to specify the nature of the feedback I think is a very important step. We hope that you will find the daily learning designs useful. We also hope that you find this structure for the implementation of the designs of uh, specifying contexts, of specifying learning outcomes, specifying the learner roles, specifying the activity, specifying the artifact, and specifying the feedback will really help you to create uh, learning objects, learning activities which are genuinely useful for you in your practice. We hope you will then share those with others. Uh, one of the things that we're very keen to encourage is the reusability of these designs uh, to take the best of them uh, and discard those that don't work. And so we'd encourage you to uh, visit the dialy.net website and have a look and see whether there's any useful resource there. You can download templates, you can uh, download examples of activities uh, and also consider sharing those with others, either through the dialy.net uh, website or through sites such as Cloudworks. Um, so we hope that you'll find this a useful and profitable activity.